it was very disturbing to me because I, I realized that no matter where you were walking, you were walking on top of people's lives. The world didn't really know how bad it was for a couple of days, really. When it came to the city of New Orleans, it wasn't the storm damage that was the problem. It was, it was the flooding that came afterwards. That didn't really start happening until after the hurricane had moved through. The levees couldn't be repaired in time, and, and the city started to flood. Instead of streets, you saw canals. You know, it made it really, really difficult to get assistance in those first few days. People, people were getting desperate. Everyone thought I was Red Cross, everyone. I was like, you haven't seen any emergency personnel yet? You know, it's been 24 hours at this point. They're like, oh no, we see the helicopters fly overhead, but. There was a lot of confusion over who was in charge of the rescue operations, where these people would go if they did get picked up by a helicopter. It was really difficult to see these people's homes destroyed, emptied out by the tide. These floodwaters that came in and swept down all their belongings. The wreckage was everything that you can imagine if you just take your city block and just chew it up. Two by fours, you know, pictures, records. There was no sound. There were no birds. There were no bees. There was no bugs. There was no anything. Everything got gone. You could just see that this storm was going to change the, the life in this place for decades. Some, some of the neighborhoods in the city are, are just like they were, the Garden District and the French Quarter. And some of the poor neighborhoods like the Lower Ninth Ward was never going to look the same. There's still vacant lots and places where the weeds come up over your head. And you can just tell that the sense of community that was theirs is lost.